Remember when cats sang for Meow Mix? Meow, meow, meow. Well, today's Meow Mix meow, tastes meow, even better. With flavors cats prefer over the old Meow Mix, three to one. And cats are doing more than singing for it. <laughs> meow Mix. Tastes so good, cats ask for it by name. To say the least. Who among us hasn't wished, at one point in their lives or another, that their cat could talk to them? Sure, they'd likely be jaded assholes, but the novelty would be well worth it, I think. And apparently it's a common fantasy seeing how many talking animal-based media we have in pop culture. And likewise, it makes total sense how many live-action talking animals we have in advertisements. Like the canine Advantix puppy and many more, They've been a staple of the ad world for a long, long time now. But perhaps none have ever been so famous as the Cats of Meow Mix fame. Though, maybe not for the reasons you'd expect. Meow Mix was launched in 1974 with the slogan, Meow Mix, tastes so good cats ask for it by name. However, as everyone knows, a slogan is rarely enough. You need something else to go with it, something visual. And so the Ralston Advertising Agency went ahead with the idea of creating a jingle and filming actual cats eating the new cat food, as if to prove to potential consumers that cats really did prefer it over the competition. This song was actually written by Shelley Palmer in 1970, who, surprise of surprises, was at one point the president of the National Academy of Arts and Sciences in the New York chapter. The jingle was sung by a singer by the name of Linda November, which might be the coolest name ever, while it was composed by Tom McFall of the Jingle House Lucas McFall. The idea for the ad came from Ron Travisano at the ad agency Della Femina Travisano and Partners, who had an account with Ralston in 1974. However, something funny happened when they went to actually shoot the commercial. While filming, one of the cats choked on a hairball, and when the footage was reviewed, it appeared as if the cat were singing. Travisano quickly realized they had lightning in a bottle, and by utilizing a simple animation trick, they could have Linda November watch the footage and lip sync to the mouth movements of the cats to make it appear as if they themselves were singing the jingle. Along with editor Jay Gold, Travisano looped footage of a cat, both in forward and reverse, to make it appear to be singing. Working with Travisano's film, McFall wrote and produced music to fit with November's vocals. Travisano then, in one last stroke of genius, came up with the idea of adding English translation subtitles, along with the bouncing ball pointing out the words the cats were singing, so the viewer could sing along. The result is perhaps one of the single most successful jingles of all time. It is often listed as one of the most memorable ads of all time, and by 1976, Meow Mix was a top brand of cat food. Clearly, the jingle had done some heavy lifting. The ad ran for 20 years, until the jingle was finally put to pasture in 1996. However, this doesn't mean the public noticed the retirement. In fact, it was so catchy, people still thought it was on the air. In a survey done 16 years after it was retired, an 81% of respondents claimed to have heard it in the last 12 months, while 39% said they remembered the jingle better than they remembered their own online passwords. Its popularity was so overwhelming that, even since its retirement, it's been brought back numerous times and done in numerous musical styles. Hell, it was even immortalized by the character Dr. Evil in the Austin Powers film franchise. I think this is a good example of why jingles were so important and why we hurt today by lacking them. They were a cultural touchstone of sorts. Music, more so than any other medium, is something that many, many people connect over. So when you create a jingle that everyone knows and loves, it brings society together in a weird way we wouldn't otherwise be. In a sense, the lack of jingles in today's advertising is, well, rather disappointing. The monoculture is dead, people like to claim, and while I don't necessarily agree with that wholesale, certain parts of it definitely are, 
and ad jingles are one of the victims. But for all its fame, all its impact, all its proof that jingles matter, there's one thing you likely have no clue about, which is that according to declassified documents, the CIA used music as part of its interrogation program. This carefully selected grouping of songs would be played in a loop for hours on end to either wear prisoners down or induce sleep deprivation. See, the CIA were smart in that they actively chose very specific songs that were either offensive or incredibly annoying. And this included songs from genres such as heavy metal or rap, but there was one song more annoying than them all. One song, so annoying, that even 16 years after its retirement, people were still singing it. That song was the Meow Mix jingle. Now, according to an article from Vox in December of 2014, the CIA has only gone on record as naming one specific song, Rawhide, that was used as a torture device. However, in 2008, in a list of songs made for the site Mother Jones, Author Justine Sherrick learned from ex-soldiers and detainees some of the other songs used. This included the Drowning Pool classic Bodies, Metallica's Enter Sandman, and the theme song to Barney and Friends. The other one added to that list? The Meowmix jingle. However, there's some speculative questioning in regards to the veracity of these claims. Some sources think the CIA intentionally leaked they were using this technique to make their methods sound silly, as when this info released, every media site was cracking wise about it, instead of talking about the torture methods actually used at places like Guantanamo. Good PR is worth the effort sometimes. Regardless of all that, there's no denying the absolute impact the Meow Mix jingle has had on pop culture. Apparently, we all universally want to hear cats sing, even if it's just about cat food. Unless we're a terrorist, then that's apparently our worst nightmare. <laughs>